Most of us remember that day. It's etched in our minds, a permanent reminder of tragedy. We all watched helplessly as lives were lost, heroes were born, and a nation was forever changed. The loss was unimaginable, the sorrow unbearable. But through that pain, we witnessed the resolve of a nation. We saw chaos give birth to courage, fear transform into fortitude, and destruction give way to determination. In the midst of the brokenness, freedom stood immovable. Today, we remember those we lost. We honor the heroes who saved so many and grieve with the families who have suffered so much. It's been 20 years, but we still remember, and we will never ever forget it.
Hallelujah. Welcome, 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 welcome. If you are sitting next to someone, just give them a high five or give them a smile and welcome them to this another beautiful day where we can just come in the presence of our Lord and just worship him and praise him. Like what the psalmist said in Psalm 86, he says, I will praise you, Lord, my God, with my whole heart. I will glorify your name forevermore. This is what we are here to do, to just praise our God. AOM welcomes you to our service, and we pray that you are ready and your heart is ready to receive what God has got in store for you. I get so excited every time when we get to meet and when I have to be before my God and when I just praise him and worship him and dance. I hope you also have your dancing shoes today. Yes. Amen. Amen. So now I just want us to commit this time before God. Just render your heart to him. Just talk to your father. Just tell him what you're looking for today. You can never know your life will not remain the same. Let's just pray. Father God Almighty, we worship you. We give you glory and to thank you for giving us this day today that we can worship you and just dance before you, oh God. It is just an awesome gift that you have blessed us with. We pray this morning, oh God, that may you touch our hearts. May you minister to us, oh God, as we bring our sacrifice of praise and worship unto you, oh God. May it be a sweet-smelling aroma, oh God, before you. Father God Almighty, we just surrender this time before you. We surrender the word into your hands, oh God. Everything that is going to be spoken to us today, Father, we give it unto you that you speak to us, that you touch our hearts, and we refuse to remain the same. Amen and amen. amen. Are you ready to dance for God? Yes. Are you ready to dance? Amen. Now it's time to put on your shoes and let's give this time to the praise and worship team. Over to you, praise and worship. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you ready to dance for the Lord yes. in this Woo! place? Amen. We are going Amen. to praise the Lord that moves us from glory to glory. Amen. 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 Are you ready to move to yes. another level? Hallelujah. Can you see your hands? Come on. Lord, I'm tired of being in the same place. I'm tired of doing the same thing. I'm tired of being in the same place. I'm tired of doing the same things. Enlarge me, Lord. Enlarge my territory. Oh, enlarge me, Lord. Enlarge my territory.
the Lord as if you are opening some doors. I want you to open your hands like this. Come on, come on, let me see your hands. Come on. He has opened my door. He has opened my door. He has opened my door. He has opened come on, my come door. On. He has done it again. 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 Come on, time. He has opened my door. He has opened my door. Open. He has opened my door. He has opened my door. I said, Tom. The Lord, you, wave your hands unto the Lord. He is a great God. Everything written in His Word, it tells us that God is a great God. Oh, everything written about you, Lord, is great. Oh, demons, they tremble at your presence because you are a great God. Oh, we give you praise. You are great, Lord. You are great. Oh, we give you praise. You are great. Yes, you are. We worship you, Jesus. We give you praise. We give you praise. We worship you. 
We exalt your name. Come on, church, lift your voice. Oh, lift your voice wherever you are. Lift your voice. He is a great God. He is a great God. We give him praise. We give him glory. Oh, you hooks upon the sea. Oh, you raise the dead, Jesus. Oh, you reign in majesty, Lord. Oh, you reign in majesty, Jesus. Oh, we worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Oh, we worship you, Lord. You are great, yes, you are holy one. You walked upon the sea, you raised the dead. You reign in majesty, mighty God. Everything written about you is great. Come on, church, lift your voice and say, You are great, yes, you are. You are great, yes, you are. Lonely one. With your hands lifted up unto the Lord. Worship. You walked upon the seas, you raised the dead. You reign in majesty, you reign in majesty, hey. mighty God. Everything, Lord, everything you are seen about I want you to you say it one more time, great. like you mean it. Say you are great, yes you are, say. You are great, yes yeah. you are. Listen to this. Oh, my little soya. The Bible says, Demons tremble at your presence. What a mighty God we say. You are great. 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 You are great.
That's why I praise you the way I do. No one knows, like I know, what you've done for me. That's why I praise you the way I do. Nobody knows, Jesus. They don't understand, Jesus, Lord, what you've done for me. That's why I praise you the way
Thank you so much for the time you've given us as a children to gather together to worship you. Thank you that wherever we are in this world, we are connected in one beautiful family, the family of God. We are part of the kingdom. And God of heaven, we say, may you be exalted, may you be glorified. Even as we look into your word this hour, Lord, may you speak to our heart. Holy Spirit, incubate our heart. Let your word bring transformation in our lives. Holy Spirit, we invite you. You're the best teacher. Please teach us. Open our ears to hear, our eyes to see, and our minds to receive the rhema of your word. Help me to communicate this word with simplicity and clarity and to the glory of Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Here at AOM, our vision is very simple. To do what? To raise up anointed disciple makers who are empowered to change the world for Christ. That's who we are. That's who we are. Amen. We are the anointed disciple makers. And God is doing incredible things in our lives and through our lives to the glory of his name. And this year is our year of what? Of kingdom advancement. We are making progress. Amen? Somebody say, I'm making progress. Say, I'm advancing. Nothing can stop me. I'm going from glory to glory. I'm going from strength to strength. I'm going from height to height. I am advancing the kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Uh, I want to read from us, our, our mentors here. Uh, today we'll be concluding this series on Kingdom Lifestyle. I'll be looking at a sermon that is titled, The Lifestyle of Joy. Somebody say joy. Somebody say joy. You know, we, we'll, be, we'll be looking at this lifestyle of joy. The Bible said the kingdom of God is not about eating and drinking. You know, sometimes people, when they, when they have joy, it's only when they eat or when they drink. Or they say, let me go and drink and be joyful. They, they miss what joy is all about. But the kingdom of God is not about eating and drinking. The joy that is in the kingdom doesn't come from party. Is somebody hearing me? It's come from party in the Holy Ghost. It comes from what? Party in the Holy Ghost. Party in the Holy Ghost. We are filled with joy. And that is the kingdom we serve. Joy in the who? In the Holy Spirit. Joy in the Holy Ghost. See, everyone is looking for joy. That's why people go to club and they will drink and they will be drunk. You know, they're, they're trying to be joyful. And, or they go to different things or they do all kinds of things just to experience joy. They forget that they are looking for joy in their own places. What is the definition of joy? So joy is a cheerful attitude. Cheerful attitude, regardless of the circumstances in your life. 
Joy is what? A cheerful attitude regardless of the circumstances around your life. There is a big difference between joy and happiness. Happiness happens to you. Joy is in the inside. Is somebody hearing me? Happiness happens to you. Joy is in the what? Inside. Happiness is about what happens around you. Joy is inbuilt in the inside. Joy is given by who? By the Holy Spirit. Joy in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And that is what we're going to look at. How do we live this lifestyle of joy? How do we live this lifestyle in the kingdom? The lifestyle of joy in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. You see, when you go to work and they promote you, you will be happy. The reason you're happy is that you're promoted. And perhaps your salary will increase. And your stature in the company will do what? Will increase. You're taken to a new position. You are happy. That is not joy. But if they fire you, what will happen? You will not be happy. Because you've lost the job. You've lost the position. You are worried about how you're going to look after yourself. But what happened with joy? No matter what happens around joy, joy is excited. Is somebody hearing me? If they fire you, you say, praise God, I'm moving on to something better. You, 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 they'll be very surprised. They, they expect you to be moody or to cry and to beg, but they fire you and say, thank you so much for the opportunity that you're giving me to move to something better and higher. And you're joyful. That is what joy can do. And that joy cannot come from, it doesn't make sense in the mind. It comes from who? It comes from the Holy Spirit. Amen? What did uh, James say in James chapter 1, verses 2 and 3? It says, count it all joy. Hey. He said, do what? Count it what? All joy, my brothers. When you meet trials of various kinds. How can you be joyful when you're facing trial? But James said, rejoice. Even when you're facing trial. When you're going through a difficult time, when you're facing challenges of life, say, count it all what? All joy. When you face trials of many kinds, when you face all kinds of tribulations and persecutions or accusations, count it to what? All joy. Our rational mind will struggle with that. God, it's not easy to count it joyful when I'm in pain. It's not easy. So if you put your hand in the fire, it is painful. If you see somebody putting their hand in the fire and smiling, you better look at them very well. Maybe the cells in the hand are no longer working. Because pain doesn't bring happiness. But because joy is different, joy is part of the fruit of the Spirit. It's where? It's on the inside. As long as the Holy Spirit is in you, you have joy. Is somebody hearing me? As long as you have the Holy Spirit, you can produce no part of this fruit of the Spirit called what? Joy. Regardless of circumstance, James said, count it what? All joy. When you face trials of many kinds, there is a reason you can only count it joy. It's when you know this secret that you can count joy in the midst of trial. If you don't know the secret on how to count it all joy in the midst of trial, you cannot be joyful. So count it all joy when you face trials of many kinds. Look at the scripture there. It's very clear. It says, for you know. Somebody say, for I know. Say, for I know. Say, the reason you can count it all joy is because you know. For you know, what do you know? That the testing of your faith will produce steadfastness. You know that the trial is going to produce something good. When you face challenges that you know it's going to be something better, you'll be joyful. I 
I'm really very proud of women. Childbirth is not easy. I've been with my wife, with our three kids. It's not easy. It's painful. But even through the pain, immediately the baby comes, the mother is smiling. She's happy to embrace the new life. You see, for nine months, you know, she carried this baby. It was not easy. It was uncomfortable to sleep. She went through all kinds of things. Some people, the first three months, is like hellfire with vomiting and all kinds of things. But they carry through it and they are looking forward to when the baby will arrive. See, for you know, if you know that that pregnancy is going to bring birth to a life, you know, it will be a bundle of joy. You can do what you count it all joy. What are you going through? It's time for you to know what will that produce? So for the testing of your faith will produce what? Steadfastness. And the Bible went to unpack all that can be produced through it. For you do what? For you know. Say with me, I know. I know. So when you know, you are stable. Hallelujah. I can tell you, you may be going through the fire. But that fire cannot consume you. That fire can only refine you. That fire can only make you better. That fire can only bring out the best in you. I want to tell you sometimes your best person comes out in the midst of challenges. Your true nature emerges. Your dependence on God, you begin to see, you know, you begin to see God in a very different, so God becomes more real than ever before. It's okay to know God as the Lord, our healer, until you're sick and doctors give up on you and God heals you. When you hear the Lord, our healer, it has a different meaning because it's not just that you read it. It's not just that you read it. You have experienced it. When all the doctors gave up on you, God came for you. Is somebody hearing me? And that same God wants to do what? Let you know what you're going through is going to produce something beautiful in your life. And with that understanding, you are filled with joy, joy inexpressible, joy inexplainable, joy that comes from heaven and from heaven alone. You're excited to face any challenge. You can wake up and say, bring it on. Bring it on. <laughs> I know whatever you bring on will take me higher. Anything you throw at me you can only elevate me. You can never crush me. I am going higher. Whatever happens is for my good. And I'm climbing from glory to glory, from strength to strength. My character is being developed. Who I am is being formed and being made more and more in the image and likeness of God. My dependency on God is growing deeper. And my understanding of God is getting fresher. Bring it on. Joy. Joy. Whatever you face in life, is it a family problem? Is it a problem at work, relationship? Is it with health? Whatever you face, I want you to know. I want you to know that the testing of your faith, that the challenges you're facing, will you yield to steadfastness? You're going to be stable in God. You're going to be steadfast. You're going to be stable, unmovable, because you know, hallelujah. I remember a few years ago, we have, uh, many of you will know him, Nick Vujicic from Australia. He was here. You know, I, 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 like, I like the terminology they have for him. His slogan is, no arms, no legs, no limits. <laughs> He doesn't have hands. He doesn't have feet. No hands, no feet, no limits. 
and he has encouraged millions of people globally. If you look at him, he's so joyful. He's so joyful, and you'll be wondering, how can you be joyful with what you're going through? Say with me, I will not beat myself up. So if the devil gives you lemon, make lemonade. Is somebody hearing me? Hallelujah. After making lemonade, use the leftover to make lemon cake. Relax and enjoy it. Is somebody hearing me? Whatever comes your way, don't murmur. Say with me, I will not murmur. The problem the Israelites had on their way to the promised land was murmuring. Every time they will murmur because of one problem or the other, and they forget the faithfulness of God. If God delivered them from Almighty Fellow, who was the war power of the time, and God overcame all the gods of the Egyptians, who can God not defeat for them? If God saved you when the devil almost killed you, who can kill you? If God has brought you thus far in your journey in life, what is it that he cannot do for you? Because I know, I know that this trial is going to bring out the best in me. Hallelujah. Only God can give joy. It doesn't come from what you have. It doesn't come from who you know. It comes from God. Even when all your friends desert you, God will not desert you. Even when all your family members abandon you, God will not abandon you. Even when people you least expect and they begin to accuse you and say all manner of things against you, God will always be for you. If God is for you, who can be against you? Because I know that God is for me and no person can be against me. Not even a problem. Not even the devil himself can be against me. Because God is for me, I will wake up every morning and say, good morning today. I'm alive and I have destiny to fulfill. Hallelujah. And what are they? fundamental truth we must know if we're going to live this lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. A lifestyle of joy. First and foremost, you must understand this. That lifestyle of joy is a choice. Somebody say with me, choice. Number one, God can never force you to do anything. He has created us as free moral agents with capacity to choose. If you're going to live a lifestyle of joy, you must make a decision. It is a choice. Joy is not about feelings. It's not about how you feel. You now, sometimes people wake up in the morning, you look at them, it's like, the whole world is crumbling. Say, what happened? Say, I woke up on the wrong side of the bed. Say, which side is that? Is it the left or the right? Which one is the wrong side? I remember a movie when somebody woke up and came out, the first person that greeted him and said, good morning. He said, what is good about this morning? Joy is a choice. The lifestyle of joy is what? Is a choice. Because as a believer, you already have it. Oh, that's what you need to know. As a believer, you already have who? The Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit enables you to be joyful. The fruit he produces in you and through you contains joy. But it's a choice. A choice you must make. Hallelujah. A choice. Are you ready to make that choice? On daily basis. Every day you wake up. You just know today is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. No news is bad news. Every news is an opportunity. 
Hallelujah. It's a choice. I like what Isaiah said in Isaiah 61 verse 3. A very beautiful passage. He said, God is to grant consolation and joy to those who mourn in Zion. Do you know you can be in Zion and be mourning? Oh my God, my God, my God. You can be in Zion and be mourning. But God is saying, no, 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 that's not where I want you to be. That's not who I have called you to be. I want to give those who mourn in Zion and I want to grant them what? Joy. Joy. How can you mourn in Zion? Do you know in the olden days, people who serve the king, people who minister to the king, dare not frown their face. Dare not show that they are not happy. That was the same thing that happened with Nehemiah. The day his face was not, you know, right before the king. The king was like, what is happening to you? He was very scared for his life. Because those that mourn in Zion, I want to give them consolation and joy. May God fill you with joy. May you never mourn in Zion. The Zion is the place of God. And you are carrying God yourself. You hearing me? They that mourn in Zion shall receive what? Shall receive joy. But we say, I will give them ornament, a gallant, or dare them of beauty instead of ashes. May God give you beauty instead of ashes. He said, ashes signifies disgrace. It shows money. See, when someone wears ashes when they're mourning, you know, when they're going through a difficult time, their faces are down. The Bible speaks about whenever something happens that is wrong, the king will tear his clothes and he will wear sackcloth and he will pour ashes on himself. He's mourning. He's not happy. But God is saying, whatever you're going through that is bringing you down, that is pushing you down, I'm about to change that garment and I'm about to give you a garment of praise. Beauty. When you look at somebody who is wearing sackcloth and ashes, they don't look beautiful. But when God clothed you, <laughs> when God clothed you, oh my God. If you, if, you, if, you, if you look at that very well, when God clothed you, he makes you beautiful. Makes you beautiful. And sometimes we're not joyful because we don't like something about ourselves. If I was this, if I had this, I would have been joyful. No, 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 no. Nothing can give you joy. Only God can give you joy. Only God. It's an oil, an oil of joy instead of what? Instead of money. A garment of praise instead of heavy burden. Instead of a failing spirit. A garment of what? Praise. Is somebody ready to praise God today? Is somebody ready to praise God? It's a choice. Say with me, it's a choice. When, when you face challenges, instead of saying, God, where are you? Begin to dance. One of the things I do sometimes when you face very difficult day, you know, difficult time, you just come back home and put on music. Worship and dance. Hallelujah. Just enjoy. See, the devil wants to steal your joy. And you must tell the devil too bad, the more you try, the more joyful I will be. The more joyful I will be. Hallelujah. And you can make a choice to stain the, the garment of sadness with the garment of praise. The garment of weariness with the garment of joy. You can make an exchange. God has already provided it for you. Is somebody hearing me? 
God has done what already provided. Say with me, I will rejoice. And as Paul was writing to the church in Corinth, he told them in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, he said, do not be discouraged. Do not become discouraged. Don't be utterly spiritless, exhausted or weighed out. Though our atmos outward man is perishing, though we are going through a difficult time, though we are facing a difficult season, our outward man is perishing. But we know that they are working together. Hallelujah. For this light and momentary affliction is producing for us what? More and ever more abundantly and everlasting glory. Somebody say glory. The weight of glory beyond measurement. What we are going through is small. The output we are going to receive is big. What we are going through is momentary. What we're going to receive is what? Forever. For this light and momentary affliction is producing. And this is the key. You see, what you're going through is what is producing the weight of glory. So what you're passing through is producing the weight of your manifestation. For our light and momentary affliction is producing for us. So when you face things in your life, I want you to understand one thing. That problem is actually producing something for you. That is producing something beautiful. Whatever you're going through, you must know that you will emerge victorious. Somebody say victorious. You must know that you will emerge victorious. You're going to come out. It will be a testimony. No wonder the Bible said, and it came to pass. That problem will pass as well. Is somebody hearing me? That challenge will also do. It will pass. It will come and it will go. I can tell you, in five years' time, you'll look back and you'll say, why was I worried? <laughs> why was I worried? It will come and it will do what? And it will pass. And it will be a story. It will be a story. There is light at the end of the tunnel. Look ahead. Keep moving. Keep moving. I remember on Connelly once, one of his songs he sang, you know, when you're walking through the fire. When you're going through hell, don't stop. Keep moving. Keep moving. Keep celebrating God because everything is going to come together. Amen? Paul wrote to the church in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. He says, Do what? Give all your worries and cares to who? To God. It is a choice. It is a choice. Give it to God. It's a what? A choice. And you can wake up every day and say, this is the day the Lord has made. Declare the psalmist. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I rejoice. So it is what? It's a choice. And that leads us, leads us to the second truth we'll consider this hour. The lifestyle of joy grows through thanksgiving. Somebody say thanksgiving. The lifestyle of joy grows through what? Thanksgiving. So if you want to grow in joy, you must be thankful. A thankful heart is a joyful heart. A thankful heart is a what? It's a joyful heart. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 16 to 18. So rejoice always. It didn't say rejoice sometimes. It didn't say rejoice when you have promotion. It didn't say rejoice when things are working well. It said rejoice when always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. 
For this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. In all circumstances, give thanks. In all circumstances. And that is the only way you can have joy. When you learn to be thankful. You may be struggling to graduate. Be thankful that you entered school. <laughs> because there are some people who are still praying that they can enter school. You may be struggling at your job. Be thankful that you have a job. You may be struggling with a difficult boss. Be thankful that you have work. I was talking with somebody just uh, last week. We were having some challenges and we were struggling over some situations that was happening in the family. But I just spoke to her, I said, you should be thankful that you have it. What if you didn't have it? No, you, you, you know, sometimes it's, you're going through difficult things. It's, going, it's draining you. It's draining you and you're like, but what if you did not have it? But praise God at least that you have something to solve that problem. Although it has destroyed your budget, it has changed everything, but you have something that was able to solve that problem. The same God who provided can provide again. He can provide again. Develop a grateful heart. Hallelujah. Develop what? A grateful heart. It is by developing this that we can grow in what? In joyfulness. What are you going through? That you're murmuring, you're complaining. Do you know there are many people who are just begging to be released from hospital? They've been there for months. They just say, just release me. I want to go home. I want to be with my family. But you have your hands, you have your feet. You have your whole body. You may have some pains here and there, but you have life. Be thankful for what you have. Hallelujah. Be thankful. You may be struggling with visas, which is a big challenge, a realistic challenge. But be thankful that you're actually here. There are people who are just dreaming if they could just travel out. And you're here. Be thankful. As you develop a thankful heart, you will be filled with joy. You'll be filled with joy. I was reading one statistics about global poverty. I can assure you, you're richer than 60% of the whole population in the world. If you have food in your house somewhere, and you have money somewhere in the house, you are richer than over 60% of the world. It broke my heart. I was watching a news um, that was two weeks ago, actually last week, about famine. Famine in Madagascar. And I was watching people eating sand. What can we do? Because there is no rain, there is no rain, there is no crop. They've been eating grasses and root. Now they are finding ways to get clay and make food from it. Some of the kids cried and cried that they will cry and sleep off. There is no food. And it's not just limited to that nation. There are many places people are struggling to eat. Even in your own country, there are some villages that people will go hungry for days. They are not fasting. The worst kind of hunger is hunger without hope. 
When you're hungry and there is no hope of food, then you have food. You have food. We must be thankful. And as we're thankful, God will fill us with joy. God will fill us with joy. And as you're thankful, when you develop a thankful heart, you will develop a cheerful heart. And you develop a giving heart. Because you look at yourself, you're better than so many people. And you're prompted to be a blessing to them. To do something. The Bible says it is more blessed to give than to receive. One translation put it this way. You are happier giving. You are what? Happier giving than receiving. A lot of times we are so focused like children. Give me, give me, give me. But we must develop the lifestyle of giving to people. Be a blessing. Be thankful for what you have. Say with me, I am blessed. No, said convincingly, I am blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed. Thirdly, the lifestyle of joy. The lifestyle of joy deepens our understanding of God's goodness. So when you understand that God is good, you'll be joyful. The Bible says God knows the end from the beginning. And God says, you are the apple of my eye. And God says, I care about you. And, and God says, I love you. I have a future for you. I have a plan for you. God says, my angels are watching over you. God, what God has spoken over your life, he said so much thing to prove that he is good. Say with me, God is good. So when you understand that God is truly good, you can be joyful. You can be joyful. You can be joyful. Just last week, we prayed for a family that were returning home. There were visa challenges, and they had to go back, you know, abruptly. And one of the words God gave me, just, God is going to look after you. Sometimes it's hard to figure out. And there was someone that was here many years ago and stayed here for some years, went home, and was hoping to come back after the holiday. Then the pandemic hit and the border was closed. She couldn't come back. She was struggling. She was trying to come back. She couldn't come back because the border is closed. No one is allowed to come in. But God has turned things around. Just within this one and a half year, she's been stuck at home. She has started a company. She has started all kinds of businesses happening. Now she's in a relationship and we are doing counseling for them and they're going to get married. I want you to know when things go bad, I want you to rejoice. God knows what he's doing. He knows what he is doing. You may not understand how it will end, but it will end in glory. As long as God is concerned, it will end in glory. I was just asking, if she was not here, she wouldn't have found him. If she was still here, she wouldn't have started the business. You know, she has started all kinds of things, restaurant. She's even producing cereals, you know, and selling. I want you to know that are God, see, whatever the devil throws at you, know for sure God will turn it around. Is somebody hearing me? When you face challenges, you should do your best, you know, do your best. But when nothing is working, always know that God is working for you. And he has a good plan. And sometimes in our lives, because we want something, we could push him, even when God is saying, slow down and listen. And sometimes it's good to just fire down and say, God, what are you trying to do? 
help me to understand. And I'm willing to follow. Hallelujah. But we say we know all things do what? Work together. All things, not some things. All things. They work together for good. They work together for our good. To them that love God and are called according to his purpose, everything will work together. Say with me, they're working for my good. They're working. They're working for my good. Hallelujah. I'm going to conclude here. But I want you to know one thing. God has a plan for your life. And in this kingdom, his plan for you is good. The Bible says, I have a plan for you. Not a plan to harm you, not to hurt you, not to do anything evil to you. But my plan for you is good. It's a plan to give you an expected end. A plan to give you a future and a hope. And the question is this, can we rejoice in every circumstance? Rejoice. Because we know. That is the key. Because we know. Count it all joy. For you know that that trial will bring steadfastness, will lead to the revelation, you know, and, and, and your character be molded, will position you where you truly belong in God. Because you know at the testing of your faith will bring the best in you. Hallelujah. And Jesus spoke to the disciples in John 15 verse 11 as we conclude here. So I told you these things that you may be filled with joy. Somebody say joy. That you may be filled with joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. <laughs> oh, I want to tell somebody your joy will overflow. Your joy will overflow. Amen? So when you experience overflowing joy, it means any person around you will contact the joy. You're, you're full with joy, but now you're overflowing. And you're affecting every person around you. Your joy is contagious. May you be filled with joy. Filled with joy. Surrender your desires to God. It's in this kingdom we're talking about. Lifestyle of the kingdom. We say it's a lifestyle of dependence on God. A lifestyle of righteousness. A lifestyle of peace. A lifestyle of joy. They point down to one thing. In this kingdom, we must completely depend on God. We must lay everything at his feet. We must trust him. We must allow him to be in charge. He's the one who can lead us. He's the one who can guide us. He's the one who can order our steps. And he's the one who has an amazing plan for us. And that's my prayer. That you be filled with joy. That you will overflow in joy that your generation will know that you have the joy of God. Thank you, Lord. Let us pray. Bow your head as we pray. I want you to begin to pray for yourself and say, God, fill me with joy. Fill me with joy. Fill me with what? Joy. Let me overflow in joy. Let me overflow in joy. Begin to pray for yourself. Let me overflow in joy. Begin to pray for yourself. I, I refuse any form of murmuring. I refuse any form of complaining. I refuse any form of joy killer in my life. Fill me with your joy. Cause me to do what? To rejoice in the Holy Spirit. Cause me to overflow in joy. Cause me to experience joy overflow. Begin to pray for yourself. Begin to pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. 
I surrender completely to you. Cause me to overflow in joy. Cause me to overflow in joy. Fill me with your joy. Masa kala brunskiri. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Fill me with your joy. Only Jesus can give joy. Fill me with your joy. And joy is a choice. Pray for yourself. God, may I choose wisely every day. May I choose joy on daily basis. May I choose joy on daily basis. May I wake up joyful. May I go to bed joyful. May I go to work joyful. May I return home joyful. May I be filled with joy. The people will look at me and say, why are you always rejoicing? May I, may I experience joy. Joy overflow. Joy in the Holy Spirit. Fill me with your joy. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Fill me with your joy. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Fill me with your joy. Begin to pray for yourself. Say, God, help me to be thankful. Give me a thankful heart. Because joy comes from thankfulness. Joy comes from what? From thankfulness. I want you right now, just begin to thank God for something. Look at your life. There are so many things to thank God for. You're alive. Thank, thank God that you're alive. You're not in the hospital. Thank God you're not there. You have clothes that you can wear. You have food in your house. Thank God. Don't think there's so many things to thank God for. You have a family. You have a, a family in God. You have other believers around you who are encouraging, who are strengthening you, who are praying for you. Thank God for his many blessings around you. There is so much. Count your blessings and name them one by one. Lord, Just thank God. Give him praise. Give him praise. Thank him. Thank, thank him. Thank him. Thank him. He has done so much. Lord. Without him, you wouldn't be here. I just want to thank, thank him that you're saved. You're a child of God. You. That is the best Lord, thing God has done for you. That I you are a child of God. That you're saved. You. you have hope of eternal life. You know where you're going. You know where you're going. That whatever happens, oh, after here, you know where you're going. You're going to spend eternity with God. It's thank something to thank God for. It's something to be oh, grateful Lord, for what he's done. He's done incredible things. Want to say he has done incredible thank things. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Lord thank you, Lord. We just oh, want to we thank, thank you, Lord. Thank you. you. Begin to pray finally, God. Help me to know that you're good. Help me to know that you're caring, that you're loving. Help me to know deep inside that whatever I'm going through, that you're aware. You're completely aware. And you have a plan. You have a plan for my life. You have a purpose for my life. And I know you will turn things around for me. And you're a good God. You're a good God. You're a good God. God, deepen my understanding of your goodness. Deepen my knowledge of your goodness. Deepen my appreciation of your goodness. Oh, God, help me. Help me not to compete with people. Help me not to compete or compare. But let my focus will be on you and on you alone. Jesus, thank you for you're the giver of joy. Help me to Help me to be joyful at all times. Help me to be joyful. The Bible says rejoice in all circumstances. In every situation rejoice. May I rejoice. In every situation, Help may I rejoice in every circumstance. May I be joyful in all so that I do. Good. Thank you, Father. Help me oh, we to give you glory. You Blessed be your holy name. Thank you. Thank you. Help me to Thank you. you. Father Lord, we come to you. Oh, Lord, fill us with your peace. 
fill us with your joy. Help us to live this lifestyle of righteousness and of total dependence. May we live a kingdom lifestyle. A lifestyle that people will look at us and they will envy us. And they will want to know our God. May we truly represent you in this kingdom by the lifestyle that we live. Holy Spirit, only you can do it. And I pray especially, Lord, fill your people with joy. Joy in the Holy Spirit. Joy in the Holy Ghost. Cause them, Lord, to rejoice at all times. Knowing that whatever we're going through is working for good. Thank you, blessed Redeemer. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. And all the saints say, and all the saints say, Wow. That was a powerful, powerful word. Thank you, Pastor, for such a powerful word. I hope you have been ministered to. I hope God has touched you in a certain way because of this word that has been spoken to us, the word that we've been given today. My life is not going to be the same again after hearing this word. Now that we have heard this word, it's time to give unto the Lord. But before we do that, I just want us to go through the announcement so that you can know what's going to be happening. We have our midweek replay. Midweek replay is on, on Wednesday every week, every Wednesday on YouTube or on Facebook. You can go and watch if you want to go back and listen to the word again. And we have our heroes. Do you have young ones? Yes. Do you want the young ones to learn more about God? God says even the little ones, he wants them to come to him. So we have our heroes. They meet every Saturday. So please, if you have a young one, make sure you join them in heroes. And then we also have the men impact, which is coming. Men, we want you to make an impact wherever you are. For more information, please refer to the announcements that we are going to be giving you on the debt and how much you also need to pay. Please, if you're a man, don't be left out, okay? And please, we also have the Daughters of Zion. Yay. This is the kind. And yeah, do we have any women in the house? Yay. Yes, the Daughters of Zion, they meet every Tuesday from 7 to 9 on Zoom. Do we have any men? Men are also not left out. We also have the sons of Abraham meeting every Tuesday from 7 to 9. So don't be left out. There's everything for everyone. Amen. Don't be left out. Now we want to give God what he has blessed us with. You know, giving is a form of worship. We worship God in different ways. Giving to him is also a form of worship because he has blessed us. Now it's our time to give unto the Lord. And prepare your tithes and your offerings. We have our QR code on the screen for those that want to scan the QR code. If you want envelopes, you get envelopes. Amen. Let's just pray for our offerings and commit them unto the Lord. Amen. Father, we thank you. Jehovah Jireh, we just want to thank you, Jehovah, for you are a good God. You say you do not hold good gifts to those that love you and those that worship you. Father, we just want to give back to you what you have blessed us with, Father. We pray for every person that is stretching forth, oh God, that may you bless them beyond measure. Father, we pray that may you remember them. Even when they call unto you, Jehovah, may you answer them. Father, we just want to worship you. For you are a good God. You are our Father. You have first loved us, oh God. Father, we just want to appreciate you and give you glory and give you honor with our tithes and with our offerings. In Jesus' mighty name, we give them unto you. Amen and amen. 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 You Over came to you, from Lord. heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross my debt to pay from the cross to the grave from the grave to the sky Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you came to my life. I'm so glad you came to save me. You can't 
to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Hallelujah, hallelujah, amen, amen, amen. God is good and all the time. And that is his nature. Wow. That's his nature. He cannot change who he is. He's a good God. And because he's good, we have joy. We have peace. We have righteousness. And as we completely depend on him, this lifestyle will be made manifest in our lives at all times. In Jesus' name. Let us pray. Just begin to appreciate God. Just give him glory. Give him glory for the joy, for the peace. Just give him glory for the righteousness. Just give him glory for this series, the kingdom lifestyle. Give him glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Pray for yourself. Say, God, give me the grace to live at this lifestyle. I, we cannot do it on our own. We must depend on him. Give me the grace to live out this kingdom lifestyle. May I truly represent the kingdom. May I truly represent the kingdom of God. Thank you, Father. Lord, I pray for everyone right now, watching, listening, wherever they are, in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray may you fill them with your joy. In the name of Jesus. Lord, as you said, my joy shall be in you, and the joy shall be complete. May they experience complete joy. Lord, you say they shall overflow in joy. May your people overflow in joy. In the name of Jesus. Oh God of heaven, I pray. May you cause your people to dance in the Holy Ghost. May you cause them to celebrate. May every garment of mourning be exchanged with a garment of praise. Oh God, may every lowness be exchanged with elevation. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. Lord, we give you glory, pray. God, for your blessings. I declare may they are going out and coming in the blessed. As they go to their workplaces, to their schools, their homes, their businesses, Father, I pray. May that going be blessed. And may their returning be blessed. May they come back with testimonies. Father, I pray may your angels watch over them. Any attack of the enemy against anyone, I destroy them completely. Lord, protect them from any form of embarrassment and any form of harassment. Oh God, may, you, may your angels watch over your children. Thank you, Abba Father. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. And all the saints say, and all the saints say, let's share the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, his goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you.